Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here. In this video, we will be talking about the regulation of glycogen synthesis and glycogen breakdown, right? So, from our previous videos, we have learned that the main enzymes responsible for glycogen synthesis and glycogen breakdown are glycogen phosphorylase and glycogen synthase. Glycogen phosphorylase useful in breaking down of glycogen and glycogen synthase is useful for making of glycogen from glucose. So, to talk about the regulation of both the uh, glycogen synthesis and glycogen breakdown, there are two types of regulations. They are hormonal regulation and allosteric regulation. First, we will see the allosteric regulation of glycogen synthesis and glycogen breakdown. So, as we have discussed, two enzymes majorly responsible in the rate limiting enzymes of both the metabolisms like uh, one is glycogen synthase and other one is glycogen phosphorylase right so first we will see glycogen synthase so and this also we have learned glycogen synthesis and glycogen breakdown takes place in liver as well as in skeletal muscles and both the enzymes will present in liver as well as in skeletal muscles right and the regulation allosteric regulation is most of similar to both uh, liver as well as in skeletal muscle so first we will see how glycogen synthase and glycogen synthesis will be regulated right so when there is glucose 1-phosphate to synthesize glycogen the enzyme that is glycogen synthase okay will come into the action and it adds these UDP glucose to glycogen primer right so what are all the things will be required I mean like for the regulation of this enzyme right first thing is glucose 6-phosphate so which conditions this glucose 6-phosphate will be produced when there is excess of glucose in the circulation and when they are entering into the cell the first reaction of glycolysis is glucose to glucose 6-phosphate so what is happening here in glycolysis glucose is converting into glucose 6-phosphate and this glucose 6-phosphate is converting into it is a reversible reaction that is fructose 6-phosphate again this fructose 6-phosphate will be converting into fructose 1,6 bisphosphate right so as the accumulation because the more and more glucose converting into more glucose 6-phosphate okay and the reversible reaction of this fructose 6-phosphate are also converting back to glucose 6-phosphate okay that means it indicating the saturation of glycolysis and the accumulated glucose 6-phosphate will start promoting the glycogen synthesis okay glycogen synthesis such that means promoting the enzyme formation or uh, making of the enzyme glycogen synthase to favor towards the glycogen formation okay so that's why here positive modulator of glycogen synthase enzyme is glucose 6-phosphate and next thing coming to uh, discuss about the glycogen phosphorylase that means glycogen breakdown here the positive modulator will be AMP because what happened AMP indicates the low levels of energy so this will be happen in case of like low levels of glucose so in that condition we don't require glycogen synthesis to take place right so here AMP is a positive modulator for glycogen phosphorylase it directs glycogen phosphorylase to go for glycogen breakdown and ATP indicates high energy state high fed state so fed state what happened we don't require any glucose for undergo glycolysis or we don't want any glycogen to broken down right so in that condition glucose 6 phosphate and ATP will be acting as negative modulator for glycogen phosphorylase so this way in skeletal muscles also similar one okay glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase will be regulated by glucose 6 phosphate and AM okay so positive modulator what is the take home message is glucose 6 phosphate is a positive modulator for glycogen synthase okay and AMP for positive modulator for glycogen breakdown via glycogen phosphorylase okay here ATP and glucose 6 phosphate again the negative modulator for glycogen phosphorylase formation which inhibits the process glycogen breakdown so that's all about uh, allosteric regulation so now we'll discuss about hormonal regulation so compared to the allosteric regulation this is bit uh, complex okay so we'll see so what are all the hormones will be involved here so insulin we said when there are high levels of uh, glucose insulin will come into the action promotes glycolysis right and uh, at the same time the accumulated products will be diverted for glycogen metabolism uh, that means glycogen synthesis here the main thing two conditions we'll see about here 
when there is a low levels of glucose okay and high levels of glucose so here glycogen breakdown how it will be activated okay epinephrine and glucagon okay because glycogen synthesis as well as breakdown will take place in both liver and muscles so here epinephrine and glucagon both will be acting in the liver glycogen as well as in the muscle glycogen so what they will do so glucagon and epinephrine both are a positive modulator for glycogen breakdown okay because these hormones will come into the action when there is a breakdown uh, when there is need of glucose in the circulation right so in that condition when these hormones will come what they do there are way of mechanism is it's like a sequential type so here you can make out so first thing is when both epinephrine and glucagon come into the action they will activate adenine adenylate cyclase enzyme okay adenylate cyclase enzyme and this enzyme what it will do it breaks up atp to camp okay atp is converting to cyclic amp okay and we also learn glycogen phosphorylase and glycogen synthase like some of the enzymes are active in phosphorylated form some of the enzymes are activated in uh, dephosphorylated form okay glycogen synthase will be activated in dephosphorylated form glycogen phosphorylase has to be phosphorylated to be means of active right so that is the difference between glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase so here when adenylate cyclase activated by glucagon and epinephrine what they do they convert atp to camp cyclic amp and cyclic amp in turn activates protein kinase a okay so cyclic amp activates protein kinase a and this activated protein kinase a phosphorylates the phosphorylase kinase which is an inactive form to active phosphorylase kinase okay again this activated phosphorylase kinase phosphorylates glycogen phosphorylase b to active glycogen phosphorylase because that's what i said glycogen phosphorylase is one of the enzyme which will be active when there is addition of phosphate so here there is addition of phosphate group from adenate cyclase enzyme from adenate cyclase to camp camp to protein kinase a protein kinase 2 phosphorylase kinase this phosphorylase kinase adds phosphate group to glycogen phosphorylase okay and activates the glycogen phosphorylase this glycogen phosphorylase stimulates the process glycogenolysis then glycogen can be freely broken down to glucose 6 phosphate all right so this is one part so the other part why what what we said glycogen synthase so what is happening here so when this active protein kinase what it will do okay so we have already said glycogen synthase will be activated in deep phosphorylated form so here glycogen synthase when it is active in dephosphorylated form when this protein kinase is activated it will go and phosphorylates glycogen synthase so now as phosphate group added to it glycogen synthase will be inactive and glycogen synthesis will be blocked okay so this is the when you are in requirement of energy okay in starvation this is a mechanism happening that means via hormonal regulation how you are getting glucose from uh, glycogen breaking right so similarly in contrary the same thing happening in case of like well fed state what happened insulin will come into the action which will block the adenylate cyclase if there is no adenylate cyclase there is no cam so there is no protein kinase so what happened there is uh, no phosphorylation so the enzymes like gly glycogen phosphorylase will not be phosphorylated so it will be in deactivated state and the same way what is happening dephosphorylated uh, the phosphorylated glycogen synthesis will be dephosphorylated then it will be active it promotes the glycogen synthesis so it is totally in contrary to glycogen uh, breakdown right so now you see here how this protein phosphatase 1 will be involved in regulation of glycogen synthesis so protein phosphatase uh, protein phosphate 1 dephosphorylates like inactive phosphorylation kinase and active glycogen synthase j so by the way it will form inactive glycogen phosphorylase and inhibit glycogen breakdown okay similarly it stimulates the glycogen synthesis so dephosphorylation and phosphorylation by doing dephosphorylation it stimulates glycogen synthesis okay by means of phosphorylation it stimulates glycogen breakdown now inactivation of glycogen synthase by kinase by insulin you see here insulin what it will do it activates tyrosine kinase so again this tyrosine kinase activates protein kinase and this protein kinase what it will do it phosphorylates the glycogen synthase kinase okay active form of glycogen synthase kinase to inactive glycogen kinase so this way it dephosphorylating okay it is dephosphorylating 
glycogen synthase a okay and converting when you add phosphate group it will be dephosphorylated when you are removing phosphate group it will be activated so this way this kinases will be involved in activation and inactivation of glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase so that's all about the allosteric and hormonal regulation of glycogen metabolism thanks for watching thank you